Welcome to the sixth video of electrocardiography. In the previous video, video number five, I tried to explain how the dipoles that are formed during the depolarization in the atria and ventricles are reflected on electrocardiography as waves. In this video, I will try to explain how a polarization is reflected as electrocardiography waves. So let us start with the atria. Uh, we are on the frontal plane, and uh, as in the fifth video, I am still using the D2 electrode, which is at plus 60 degrees. You know that before any depolarization, all cells in the atria are at the resting membrane potential, and therefore the outer surfaces of all of them are positively charged. Well, depolarization starts at the SA node and spreads towards the AV node. The black arrow here is showing us the direction of the spread of depolarization. It, in, in better words, it is from upwards to downwards and from right to left. The first atrial cells that are going to depolarize are the cells in the neighborhood of the sinoatrial nodes. When they depolarize, their outer surfaces are going to be negatively charged, uh, while the other cells closer to the AV node are still at resting membrane potential and positively charged on the outside. So the result is the formation of a dipole. We can express this dipole by an arrow, which is called a vector. The red arrow is showing here the depolarization vector, and the tip of the arrow is pointing to the positive end of the dipole. So how will this dipole be reflected on the electrocardiography? We, according to the electrocardiography rule, if you have a positive electrode facing the positive side of a dipole, you are going to obtain a positive recording. And here we have our positive P wave in the D2 recording. After all cells are depolarized, all of the cells in the atria are negatively charged on their outside. And then repolarization starts. In the atria, the first cells that are going to repolarize are the cells that first depolarize. So this means that depolarization is also going to start in the neighborhood of the SA node and it will move towards the AV node. So if we have, a, uh, have an arrow representing the direction of the spread of repolarization, it's again from up to downward, right to left, as you see with this black arrow here. The first cells that are going to repolarize are close to the SA node, and when they repolarize, their outer surfaces will be positively charged. The cells on the further end are still uh, negatively charged, so we have a dipole. If we draw a vector for this dipole, this red arrow will be representing our vector, and the tip of the vector will be showing the positive end of the dipole. How will this dipole be reflected on our recording? Well, now we can easily see that the D2 electrode is close to the negative side of the dipole. This means it is going to record a negative wave, and this is our TA wave. It is the repolarization wave for the atria. At this point, I have to say that TA wave is not visible in normal electrocardiography. Here is why. Uh, I, I request you to concentrate on the black action potentials. Here is one action potential for the atria and one action potential for the ventricles. You can easily see that at this point, the repolarization of the atria is happening at the same time that the ventricles are depolarizing. So, if we are to see any TA wave, it must be at the same position with the QRS. However, TA wave is so small that it will not be visible and it will get lost in the large QRS complex. In the black electrocardiogram here is a normal electrocardiogram recorded from the D2 electrode and we, will, we are not able to see the TA wave. It is lost in the QRS. Is there a possibility to see the TA wave? Okay, it is possible. Let's start with the experimental possibilities. In the laboratory, if you cut 
the anatomical connection of the atrioventricular node to the ventricles, the electrical activity that is produced in the atria will not be able to pass on to the ventricles, the result of which is that there is no QRS complex. The same condition can be obtained by cooling the AV node. When you cool the AV node, the electrical activity is going to stop, it will not pass on to the ventricles, and there will be no S uh, QRS complex. If there is no QRS complex, at the position that the QRS complex disappears, you will be able to see a TA wave. This is done in the laboratory experimentally by anatomical cut or by cooling down the atrioventricular node. Let's try to give some examples from the clinics as well. The first example is tachycardia. When there is tachycardia, PR interval shortens. When the PR interval shortens, this means that the, the ventricular depolarization is going to start earlier. I tried to show it by the blue ventricular action potential. You, see, you can see that the depolarization of the ventricles take place at an earlier position and uh, where at a, at a normal position with a normal heart rate of the QRS, you will be able to see the TA wave. Yeah. Uh, one condition where you end up with tachycardia is the treadmill exercise test when you are taking an electrocardiography while the patient is exercising. In a condition like this, tachycardia happens and the QRS complex happens earlier and then you will be able to see TA after the QRS complex. In D2, TA is negative, and we have to be very careful here and keep this information in, in mind in during, a, in during a treadmill exercise test because we may think this negative TA is an ST depression, but it is not. ST depression is the result of, is a sign of myocardial infarction, but this TA, negative TA in D2, is because of tachycardia. The second example is with the red electrocardiography here. This example is with a PR prolongation. PR prolongation in the clinics is called a first degree AV block. In a condition like this, the ventricular depolarization is going to start a bit later. So uh, I tried to represent this with a red action potential, you can see that the depolarization forms as a QRS, uh, QRS complex at a, later, at a later time. So at the position where the normal QRS should be, we would be able to observe our negative TA in D2. So uh, in case of PR prolongation, we may be able to observe TA at the PR uh, interval here. These are examples from the clinics. Uh, before uh, finishing this part, I want to talk about one last point. Uh, our D2 electrode on the frontal plane was at 60 degrees and it recorded a positive P, negative TA. What if we had an electrode like in AVR on the other side? Now, in a condition like this, our positive electrode will be seeing the negative end of the uh, dipole or the vector for depolarization, and it's going to record a negative P wave. During repolarization, our electrode will be close to the positive end of the repolarization, and the electrode, uh, the recording of electrocardiography, will be a positive T wave. So I am trying to say here that when you have a positive P, TA is negative. When you have a po negative P, TA is positive.